Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And if you're having trouble with adding or subtracting fractions, you are definitely not alone. And what I'm going to teach you in this quick video is how to do a problem like this, which of course is adding two fractions. And when I teach you this, it's literally going to take like one minute. But I'm not going to teach you this just quite yet. I'm going to hold off because uh, I want to see first whether you can actually do this problem. And then I'm going to show you the kind of the long way. And then I'm going to give you a fantastic little method that you can use so you can be successful in adding and subtracting fractions, which is a very um, common place where a lot of math students get confused. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then, of course, I'm going to teach you a fantastic technique that, uh, matter of fact, all math students uh, should know. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if you like this video, if it helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's get into this problem. So here we have two fifths plus one fourth. And when you add or subtract fractions, okay, so you can have an addition problem or subtraction problem, you can only add or subtract fractions if the denominators, these bottom numbers, are the same. So here they are uh, clearly not the same. Let's just look at a quick example. If I had one um, uh, fifth plus two fifths, could I add these fractions? Yes, indeed, I can add these right away because the bottom numbers, the denominators, are common. So we can just simply just add the numerator. So the answer here is three fifths. But uh, of course, in the real world, uh, not every single fraction problem is going to be this easy. So what about a situation like the one we're looking at right here, right? So the denominators are not the same. So what do you have to do? Well, what you uh, typically have been uh, taught, and it is correct. Okay, I'm not trying to say that you don't need to know this. You need to understand how to find the lowest common denominator. All right, so we need to find a common denominator. In other words, what is a number that both five and four have in common? Okay, of course, these are uh, the numbers in these respective denominators. So we have to find a common denominator, and five and four have a lot of numbers in common, but we want to find the lowest common denominator. Now, to find the LCD is a whole little procedure in and of itself. Uh, of course, um, I have here that the answer is 20. The lowest common denominator is 20. So a lot of you are like, yeah, I already know that, Mr. YouTube Math Man. This is easy. This is easy. Well, listen, what if I gave you a problem like this? Instead of um, 2 fifths plus 1 over 4, let's kind of like, um, you know, make these denominators a little bit interesting. What if I had like 562 and 408. What if I was trying to add these two fractions, right? A lot of you would just be like really angry at me and be like, yeah, that's not fair. I'll just use my calculator. Matter of fact, I'm just going to leave your YouTube video right now. Well, what I'm trying to show you is a technique that you could actually use even with a uh, more challenging problem like that. But again, we're talking about like the um, kind of some of the features, not features, but uh, some of the uh, things that when you think about fractions, okay, a lot of students get stuck, especially with adding and subtracting fractions because they're not quite sure how to find the LCD. Okay, so let's suppose you already know, oh yes, the LCD is 20. Perfect. What do we need to do next? Well, what we have to do is take each one of these fractions, two-fifths and one-fourth, and rewrite them such that they have a com the uh, actual common denominator, the lowest common denominator, which is 20. So how do I turn a 5 into a 20? Well, what I need to do is multiply it by 4. So 4 times 5 is 20, but I also got to mul uh, multiply the numerator by 4. So that's 4 times 2, that is 8. So I have to rewrite 2 fifths as the fraction 8 over 20. Remember, I want to have 20 in there as my denominator. So uh, let's go over to this fraction. We got 1 fourth. How do I turn this 4 into a 20? Well, just multiply by 5, but i got to multiply the numerator by 5. So 4 times 5 is 20. And 1 times 5, of course, is 5. So we re, uh, re, uh, change. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to say rewrite. Re, if I slow down, I would be able to do that. So we want to rewrite or change the fraction 1 fourth to an equivalent fraction 5 over 20.
So already, you know, we got a little bit of work going on here. And now at this point, what we have is two equivalent fractions, okay? Two fifths and eight over 20. Um, it, they're basically, you know, um, equivalent in terms of they're the same number, same value, right? So if I gave you the fraction eight over 20 and I said to reduce it, you would go right back to two fifths. If I gave you the fraction five over 20 and said reduce it, you would go back to the fraction one fourth. So we didn't break anything here. All we did is rewrite these respective fractions such that we have the denominator. Oh, I didn't want to do that. So uh, the denominators are the same. So we have 20 and 20. Now, finally, we can add the respective numerators. And of course, if this was a subtraction problem, we would do that. So eight plus five is 13. And we put that over the denominator 20. So this is how we get our answer. Now, most of you out there, take this approach, which is the approach that you should take. Okay, this is what you learned in school, but really it kind of looks like this. Okay, so I kind of like to have fun with my little artwork here. So you got this student and they're like, oh my goodness, I got this fraction problem. I got to think about this LCD business and I got to change these fractions. You know, I don't like math. I'd rather do English or social studies. Listen, I get it, but what I'm gonna do right now is give you a fantastic little technique. I'm literally gonna show you this in one minute. But this technique is not gonna have any value okay, to you unless you can compare it to what I just showed you. Now, uh, everything I just showed you is absolutely critical in arithmetic and math. You need to understand it. So, um, you know, it's not that I'm saying that this isn't important and you can just disregard this because you do need to get this. What I'm getting, what I'm getting at in this particular video is if you're struggling with fractions, you still need to be able to do a problem like this and find the sum. So how can you do this without, let's say your brain uh, not having to work so much? Well, let's go ahead and show you this right now. Okay, so I'm gonna call this the easy way, but really I refer to this as the bow tie, bow tie technique, okay? So, or the bow tie method. So here's a little stick figure person right here. What is a bow tie? It's like one of these things right here. And some of you are probably saying, oh yes, bow tie. I bet you that, uh, I bet you wear a bow tie. You probably got a pocket protector with a bunch of calculators and pencils hanging out like that. No, I would, uh, you know, you wouldn't probably recognize me. I look like our uh, average person. So no, you know, just because you love mathematics, you don't want, you know, wear a bow tie. But hey, listen, if you bow ties your thing, they're pretty cool as well. But anyways, bow tie. So why am I saying bow tie? Because you want to remember this pattern. Okay, and I'll show you this uh, in just one second. All right, so this is the bow tie technique and it's applicable uh, in situations where you need to um, add or subtract fractions, okay? Not mixed number fractions. If you had a fraction like three and one half, you would need to uh, write this as an improper fraction. So uh, two times three is six. Six plus one is seven halves. So make sure that all your fractions are improper or proper, i.e. just one numerator and one denominator. And then you'll be able to use this technique and you're gonna be able to learn this in literally one minute. Okay, so here we go, right? So this is a very specific set of steps. It's literally three steps. Just follow this pattern, okay? So here we go. We're gonna start with the bottom right. You always start right here, okay? So this fraction to the right, the bottom right, this denominator, you're gonna multiply across this way. So it's gonna be four times two. Four times two, you see I'm going right here. Four times two is eight. I'm gonna put our answer there. This is an addition problem. So you're gonna put a plus sign and what we're doing here is form the numerator. Then I'm going to multiply, this is step two. But again, you have to do it in this exact order. So it's gonna be five times one. Gonna multiply across, of course that is five, okay? So this forms our numerator. So we're gonna put a fraction bar and then we're going to multiply from left to right. Five times four is 20. So let's just clean this up, eight uh, plus five, is of course 13 and we're gonna put that over 20. And there you go, that is the same thing that we got way over here without all this work. There's 13 over 20, but I did that in like three steps. So some of you are like, oh my goodness, why didn't my teacher teach you this? Thank you, John, thank you, John. Listen, you're welcome, okay? Uh, well, first of all, I wanna thank you for watching this video and don't forget to like and subscribe. But here's the deal, right? Um, this particular technique, is so awesome you can use it with variables as well 
So let me show you, for example, what if I had like x over 3 plus y over 2? Okay, so now we're kind of doing a little bit of algebra here. So watch how easy it is to add these fractions. I'm going to start from here to here. 2 times x is 2x plus, it's an addition problem, 3 times y is 3y. I'm going to put that over 3 times 2, which is 6, and I am done. You get your little A plus, you get your 100%, and that is fantastic. Okay, now the only drawback on this particular technique is that sometimes you won't um, have a fraction that's fully reduced. So always take a look at your final answers and reduce if necessary. But uh, this uh, bow tie technique is a lifesaver. Believe me, I've been teaching math for decades, doing math for decades. If you remember this little pattern, okay, again, it has to be from the bottom right to the top, just like that. And the reason why this is important, let's just change this real quick to a subtraction problem, okay? So if this was a subtraction problem here, okay, if you went 4 times 2, of course, that's 8. 5 minus 1, okay, it's going to be 5. Now, if you just flip the order and you put the 5 first and the 8 second, you would get a different sign. So this is why it has to be in this uh, specific pattern. And, of course, 5 times 4, so here you would have what? Uh, 3 over 20 would be the answer. So super easy. The only thing that you may have to do if you're dealing with mixed number fractions is to convert them into uh, improper fractions first and then just go ahead and apply this technique. Now, I wouldn't um, say that this should be your go-to method. Okay, In other words, uh, if you are already successful with fractions using the LCD and everything else, that's outstanding because you're going to need to know how to... Um, uh, find the LCD, not only in arithmetic, but in algebra as well. So there are no real true shortcuts, but if you're stuck right now with fractions, okay, you got to get some momentum going and at least be able to get these problems correct. Okay, so again, addition and subtraction of fractions is what typically gets most students kind of bogged down. Hopefully, you like this video. You're like, this was awesome. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And by the way, if you need additional help with arithmetic, basic math, I have a fantastic little mini course called my Math Foundations course. You can find it in the middle and high school math section of my math help program, but it's a quick little course. I cover decimals, fractions, percent, uh, order of operations, all the little foundational things that are critical for you to master in order for you to be successful in more advanced math like algebra. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.